Today's video, I'm getting ready to show you guys just how easy it is to make chicken and sausage and Dewey sausage gumbo. So look, I'm gonna go ahead and go over these ingredients. I'm gonna start with the okra. I got some diced onions that I had already made, green uh, bell pepper. Look, we got some parsley. We gonna use a little bit of that. You know what I mean? We got celery. Well, we got bay leaf, vegetable oil, garlic cloves, flour, and of course you gotta have a Creole kick. Now I'm gonna show the big one. If you guys haven't ran out and got yourself this size right here, this is what you need, right? This right here, when I say gumbo, this is what give it that flavor. Now, some of you guys are gonna use filet. You know what I mean? It's up to you. I don't usually uh, do it that way. What I do is I put the bottle out, put it on the table for those that like it, they can put it in their individual bowls. Hey, a few more ingredients. Look, you gotta have olive oil. You know what I mean? Uh, we got salt and pepper. And then back here, look, we got chicken broth. If you don't know anything, you know that all of this right here, we making flavors, folks. And we gonna plate it right here in this bowl. Hey, with that being said, I got some rice going. I'm not finna over talk it. Let's get it. Okay, so look, what I did was I took my chicken out. Look, I only put like about a pound of chicken in here, right? So look, I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and give this a cut. Don't forget to make sure your knife is, your blade is, you know, sharp, especially with this being, you know, slippery. Now, let's talk about this right here. You can see right here, it's got a little fat on there. It's up to you guys. You guys can like clean it off. You know what I mean? Clean it up. For me, I don't do it like that. I just cut these down into like bite-sized pieces. You guys can take a look. See, I cut them all down like this, right? One pound didn't look like a lot because that was three, you know, chicken thighs. Now that you see it, look, now you can see, you know, about how much volume. It's up to you. Now I'm gonna take my andouille sausage. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it down. And I love seeing this. If I cut them down like this, and I gotta give the person that first told me that, I'm sure all of you guys already know that, but if you cut them down this way, it's easier. That way I can, you know, multi, I call it multitasking, but I can be more efficient. That's what it is. So look, I'm gonna just cut them down like this. And the reason it's on here with my chicken, I'm gonna say what difference does it make? Cause I'm gonna stick this, I'm gonna season that and give this about a one minute head start. And then I'm gonna add that. And that's gonna add a lot of flavor and cook that in there also. Chicken's done, the chicken and dewey is done. I already started putting a little heat under here. You know what I mean? So let's just go ahead and add a little, just a little bit of olive oil. So you guys can see it. You know what I mean? This is just for the chicken, right? So we'll start there. Now, you know what, I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit cause I want to be under a medium flame. You know, maybe a medium high. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just start adding this. You know, my chicken, like I said, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a head start. Look, we are gonna go ahead and put some of this pepper in there, right? We are just doing a little seasoning. Couple of pinches of kosher salt. Those are kind of like generous pinches. Now you wanna go ahead and get yourself, you know, whatever utensil you're gonna be using. For me, you know, I like to use these wood utensils, right? So we're just gonna give this a run like this. Now, we are finna introduce some flavor. Here we go with the chicken and dewey. Now we're just gonna let this work down, brown up, get hot, and that chicken and dewey gonna release all of those, you know, flavors that it is, all of the seasoning and everything, it'll release it all in here. So I'm gonna leave it like this, let it cook. I'm gonna let this go for about, I'm gonna say about, uh, maybe about three or four more, mi more minutes. Okay, so, I actually went a little longer. This is probably more close to being four minutes, but I want you guys to take a look down there. Look at that. Ah, oh, this is, I can smell it. This is right. This size of your chicken, listen, I'm not worried about if it's cooked all the way, you know, through, because check it out. It's going to cook inside of this gumbo. Look, you see that right there? That's all the andouille, you know, seasoning in here. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about building flavor. You know, this is just like the start, 101. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And what I'm gonna do is take all of the contents out and put this in a bowl. We're gonna set that off to the side. Okay, so you guys get to just, you see, got my strainer, look. Anything that's dripping, I don't know if you guys can see that, but anything that's dripping, we just want that to, you know, stay inside the pot. Cause guess what folks, we gotta, we gotta use for that. This is what we looking like right there. That right there, ooh my goodness. I'm thinking about a stew, I could throw that in. Hey, but listen, if I had my choice over stew or gumbo, gumbo wins 100 times. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm bringing, you know, my, I'm gonna call this my liquid goodness. I'm bringing that back. This is the remnants from, you know, the andouille sauces and the chicken, right? And all the seasoning. We got that going, we got a little heat in there. You can see it right there. Now check this part out right here. 
we're just gonna go ahead and add our oil. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wait for this to heat up and get this nice and hot. Now, I'm gonna show you guys about making the roux. Meanwhile, while we making the roux, because it's important that you, when you're making the roux, look, I like to keep this elbow going and this wrist going, right? So I'm gonna be constantly stirring it. What I'm gonna do is we gonna multitask. As I'm standing here, I'm gonna start breaking down and you know, chopping up my veggies, my, my onions, you know, and getting all of that together, right? So obviously, if you look down in here, you can see it's ready. Got a nice little rolling boil on it. I add a little bit in it at a time, right? So we're gonna start putting our flour in like that. And we'll just start moving this back and forth. Be careful, the way I'm doing it right here, sometimes if I hit the side, it'll splash up. And believe me, when I tell you this oil is hot, it's hot. So just a little bit more. Just keep going, we don't wanna have no lumps. But I want you to look at the texture. See how I'm starting to sweep it, it don't just immediately go back. We getting right now, folks. We still got a little bit more to put in here. Now I just wanna say this part right here. My videos, I got it, they a little bit longer than others, but it's to help you guys and to show you how things are gonna look at different uh, phases. I can cut them down and make a six or eight, seven minute video making the, uh, how to make a roux, but I just want you to look at it. I want you to notice the color and then I wanna show you what it looked like under med you know, medium high heat, you know, as we bring it up, what it looked like at 10 minutes, what it looked like at 20 minutes, and so on, right? Look at the color, and that's what we are gonna stay on top of. We are gonna start off with this little peanut butter, right? Ain't quite as dark as peanut butter, but we on our way. But I wanna see it, and I wanna make it look like chocolate. Okay, so look, we're getting a little darker, but I wanna address this part. You can burn the root. And when you burn a roux, listen, it'll have like some flakes in it. But if you look down in here, you can see some little flakes. But those flakes is the way I do it. When I put that in Dewey sausage and I leave everything in the inside, you'll see them on the side. That's what that is. This is not burnt, folks. You just stay with this and let's just keep moving this around like that. Look at the bottom of it. Nothing is sticking, none of that. Everything moving back. And I will tell you this right now, I ain't never smelled flour and oil ever smell this good. All right, so we just want to keep moving it around like this. I'm looking at it. I'm going to adjust my fire because I don't want it so high. Okay, so look, I'm just going to do a rough chop, right? So I'm going to quarter this, right? That, it's up to, you know, however you guys want to do it. Just, this is good enough for me. We put this in here. What we want is the flavor, you know what I mean? And when you cut them up like this, they kind of like dissolve once we start cooking it. And then this little green part right here, I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of it. Sometime I'll leave it, but for right now, I'm going to just take this part out. Okay, so look, it's been about 22 minutes. At the heat that I'm using, look at this right here. This right here is okay, All right? So I'm liking this, I'm liking the color. I don't want it to get too much darker as of right now. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding my veggies, right? I'm gonna go ahead and start, look, with just, I'm gonna just take a little bit of this, you know, the diced onions and just put that in there like that. But the main thing is when you do anything that requires onions and other veggies, I start with those first because it takes a little bit longer, you know, just to break those down. Nothing has changed. We still want to move this back and forth and cook this. Look at this right here. This is starting to release its flavor already inside of the roux. But you see where I'm going with it, folks? Especially for my new people, you got to give this a try. Don't be scared. I know we didn't heard all the stories like, hey, you can burn the roux and all that. Only way you're going to find out is to follow my recipe and check this out and to just do it. Okay, so look, now I'm going to go ahead and add my celery and my bell pepper, right? I went heavy on the bell pepper, didn't need to go that heavy, you know what I mean? But I like the, you know, the flavor from it. But you wanna get all this in here together like this. The heat is right. So stay with me, folks. You can see it's still gonna get a little bit darker. That's why I put it in there when I did. That's the key. Okay, so look, I've already loaded up, you know, my, my garlic press. I got three cloves in there. We are gonna go ahead and just give this a go. Look at that right there. I don't know why that gives me so much gratification. But you see that right there? You ain't never seen a, a roux. That's it right there, folks. Okay, so look, I let this go. You know what I mean? Uh, this is nice. I'm liking that. So check this out. You guys see the meat right next to me? I'm gonna go ahead and add this. Look, just a dump and go. I want all of the flavor in the inside. Go ahead and get this. You know what I mean? Because we don't want to burn ourselves. Look, we're gonna go ahead and get anything to release and just keep moving this back and forth. Get everything coated. 
if this don't look good to you folks, I don't know what what does you know what i mean now you gotta remember look i like everything on the meaty side you guys don't have to use as much as i'm using but once i go ahead and add my liquid to it you'll see the difference remember i'm using frozen okra that's fine if you got fresh good i mean great if you don't frozen okra works just fine i'm gonna go ahead and just add it now look i'm just moving this around getting this going look at this right here this is that creole kick this right here is what really, really ties it all together. If you guys been following me for a minute, you know I swear by this, the garlic butter, which is really not really fair to the rest of the products because I use them all. I don't want to lie to you, I use them all. But I don't want to like beat everybody up, so if I go with my must-haves, you got to have this. Okay, so now what we're getting ready to do is we finna tie it all in, right? So I'm going to go with my broth. Look, remember how dark we had got the roux? This is where it's gonna come together for some of you guys. You guys are gonna get a chance to see. Look at the liquid right now. When you think about gumbo, remember when Granny used to make it, it used to have that color? Look at that right there. But we ain't done yet. Let's get all of it in there. There we go. Now we gotta get this back up to a boil, right? And then we're gonna set it, put it on medium. No, we're gonna put it on like a low. We're gonna put this lid on here and we're gonna let it do its do. But if you see how I'm moving it around, you remember we had that roux going, you know, with that flour. You can see it's not, you can see the thickness of it. You know what I mean? But we got some cooking to do. Okay, so let's check. Okay, we got a nice little simmer going. That's good right there. Look, I'm just gonna give it a little, a little stir. I'm liking this. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and let this cook, you know, real low. We're gonna let this, you know, cook for about, I'm gonna check it again in 30 minutes. You know what I mean? Sometimes you guys can, it depends. I, I really don't know what the formula is, but if you ask me, I'm gonna say 30 to 45 minutes. You know, some people like to even go an hour, it depends. Sometimes I do, but I'm gonna taste it and see where we at. And then last but not least, now that we got like a little bit of a boil, I'm adding my bay leaves. Let's go ahead and get these submerged so they can do their thing. Let's put this top back on and I'll see you guys in 30 minutes and we'll just take a look at it. Okay, so look, check it out. I'm gonna let you guys take a look at this. This is after 45 minutes, right? So look, I'm gonna take it out, take this top off. Ah, what does that say to y'all? I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. I know everybody's saying gumbo's supposed to cook five, 10, 15 hours, stuff like that. But you see this right here? I want you to see if you can see the thickness of it. Ah, I'm gonna go ahead and just bring some up like that. Can you see that? Can you see the texture? Oh yeah, look at that chicken. Now remember, this is just chicken and sausage, but I want you to take a look at, you know, the, the root. Now, all I'm gonna do is take these out, and actually, as I find them, I'll take them out, because you got a lot of flavor from the bay leaf also. If you take yourself on some of these bowls, you see I cook with them, so you should have these already, especially if you've been following me for a minute, right? You take this, you put the, you take some non-stick spray, spray it. You wanna get it in there so nothing sticks. Then you take your rice, put it in here, pack it in. You got it, you, yay, you got it now? Huh, super easy. Hey, super simple. Makes it, it just levels up your presentation. Now, I want to show you this part right here. Look inside this right there. You see that right there? Look at how I hit it and you can see the texture and the thickness of that. That right there is fire, folks. So I'm gonna just do it like this. Bring this over here like that and just start putting this around here like this. Now, remember we had that parsley? I went ahead and got everything set up. You know what I mean? So this way we can Ooh wee, I can barely talk folks. And I know I'm getting something on the top. It ain't got to be perfect. You know, I'ma clean the bowl up and all of that. But, oh my God, look at that. You guys tell me what you think. But I'ma go ahead and just give it a little, just to make it pop over the top, just like that. Oh, I gotta hurry up and get me a spoon. I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to hold back. Hey, I'm finna dig in folks. I'll get a thumbnail in a minute. But listen, I'm super hungry and I'm finna get it. This is what I'm talking about, folks. This right here is done right. Hey, give me a minute. Let me get my mouth cleaned up. Let me hit it a couple more times and let me give you a description. Okay, so look, I ain't gonna lie to you guys. Listen, if you look right here, I told you I'll make a thumbnail and make one later. I got my thumbnail from this right here, but I did eat that. Uh, we knocked off about, I'm gonna say about 70% of this pot already. Just everybody went ham and then I remembered, oh yeah folks, we gotta wrap this video up. Now look, let me give you the description. Okay, so check it out. When I step out and come back in here right off the back, you know right now, when you smell it, it smells like gumbo. Don't always have to have that filet in there. It smells like it got it in there anyway. It's just not as 
strong as it would be if I were to just cook with it, right? Again, I usually leave that on the table and let each individual person, after they make their bowl, they do their thing individually, right? I can just tell you, listen, the andouille sauces, you know what I mean? And the main thing is the Creole kick. That tied everything together. Now listen, you ain't always gotta use Creole kick. If you don't have it, you know what I mean? Use your favorite Cajun seasoning. But the Creole kick, I'm telling you, it's the perfect blend. Along with this, and you know, the chicken and dewy, all of that plays a, you know, plays a role all the way down to, you know, getting your roux right, adding, the, uh, you know, your holy trinity to it. The whole shebang, super easy. If you're new to my channel, let me just take this time to say, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and I want you guys to tell everybody out there, listen, there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes like this and taking the mystery out of cooking. And guess what, folks? I'm on bowl number two. I'm out.